Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. We've got a ton of community posts this week, ranging all over the place. Visualizations, data modeling, you name it. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. Laura Graham Brown's got a blog slash video looking at the actual ability to endorse a data set. So whether it be promoted or certified, this allows you to easily identify data models that are quote unquote blessed, right? These are the sources of truth. And she walks through how to actually set that up in the Power BI service. Also, she doesn't necessarily call this out in her blog, but this is also available with data flows as well. So you can definitely take advantage of this from an organization perspective to highlight those data sets and data flows that are coming from that managed environment, right? So these are the sources of truth with inside of your organization. So if you're curious about this, if you're not even aware that this is available, check out this blog, check out the video, got it linked up above, down below, and you can go learn how to integrate this feature with inside of the service for your organization. Mark Lilleveld's got a blog looking at an external tool that he's created to help document your data model. He did a Twitter poll and he showed the results of that where most folks aren't documenting. They don't think about it. You create your data model, then you put it out there in the world and you forget about it, right? Without letting people know like what this data model actually is or how it, how it works. What Mark has created is basically a template file that you can go and get information about your data model. So it's going to give you some discovery, talk about relationships, all of that information, and just help explain what this data model is doing. It is an external tool. It does run some PowerShell, so you're going to have to do some setup for it, but he walks you through it in his blog. Definitely check it out and see if it's a good fit for you in terms of what you're trying to do. Links, as always, down in the description below, along with links to all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items, so go check it out. Reed Havens has got a video looking at how to actually change the image for button states. So when you can have it as a default, hover and then selected, and you can change the image as part of that. It's actually a pretty interesting way to go and add some added value to your images and make the buttons a little more interactive. I also appreciate that he had the Millennium Falcon in there as well. Reed continues to impress me on the visualization front. Also just a heads up, our live stream that's gonna be happening on August 8th will feature read as well. And so bring your visualization questions and he can help try and answer those. Chris Hamill's got a blog looking at how many filters are actually applied to your report. This is actually a pretty neat trick and something you can do from a design approach, right? So how do you actually communicate what's being applied? to your model from like a filter context perspective. Chris does call out that this is not gonna show you the individual items that are selected, maybe in like a slicer box, just the fact that something was selected, not necessarily how many, but it's a nice way to communicate that from a report consumption perspective. So definitely check this out. Maybe it's something you can apply in your reports. Marco Russo over at SQL BI's got a video looking at how do you read Vertipak Analyzer results inside of DAX Studio. I know Patrick and I have said this a bunch, but Vertipak Analyzer is definitely a go-to tool for us that we use when trying to optimize data models or troubleshooting performance or anything like that. That's, that's one of our first stops that we do is to get the metadata of your model and have a look and see are there indicators there that maybe tell us that we need to go optimize something? And Marco walks you through, once you get that, those details inside of DAX Studio, how do you actually read them? Like, how do you, how do you discern information out of that? And so it's a great thing. Definitely go check it out. If you're working with data models, this is a must. All right, I want to hand this over to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned. Maybe it was something I didn't. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button. Smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome. And we'll see you in the next video.